Hello Kerbal Nauts and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. This is a tutorial and showing you how to get into orbit, how to build your rocket that'll get you into orbit and how to use that orbit, that rocket to get into orbit. Okay, so we're going to show you this, how to engineer your way through Kerbal Space Program. But I'm not going to do this in career mode, I'm going to do this in sandbox mode. Just, I'm using that because it doesn't give you any penalties, like it won't take money away from you, and it's an easy way of just working and learning through the parts at your heart's content. You want to play career? That's fair enough. Anyway, I'm going to call this, call this Orbit Tutorial, Dock Flag, and start. Okay, so if this is the first time you started this game, the first time you've play this game or you just downloaded it or even if you're just playing the demo well in this case it might be a bit different because the demo doesn't have the new aerodynamics so it's going to be a slightly different I have an older tutorial which will help you with that but if you've got the new game version 1 I think this is now at version 1.01 .01, because they've done some more bug fixes anyway I'm rambling on let's say thank you to Gene there and anyway, this is just going to be a tutorial on how to get into orbit using the new aerodynamics. Nothing more. And because that's the hardest thing, so the first thing you want to do is click on that middle building that I just did now and go into the VAB. Okay, so you want to engineer your rocket to get yourself into orbit. So first thing you have to start off with is a command pod. And that's where your Kerbal is going to sit. It's going to keep him alive in space and it's going to keep him alive coming returning to Kirby. Next thing you want is a parachute so your Kerbal can return safely. By the way you have to engineer your rocket always in reverse. What's the last thing you're gonna happen to you what's the last thing you want to happen to your Kerbal to the first thing. So we want him to return safely so we need a parachute and if you go to aerodynamics you want a heat shield because they've added re-entry heating to us. So a heat shield will protect the capsule as it come in and stop it from exploding. Now we've got that sorted out. Go to structural, get the TR18A stack decoupler, put him under your capsule, and that's going to separate the rocket from your capsule when you're returning. Now for the orbit stage. So get the LVT400 400 fuel tank, put him under there. Go to the rocket engines. Get the LV-909 engine, put him under there. And that is the rocket that's going to get you into orbit. But first, before you do that, you need to get out of the atmosphere. So again, we need another rocket under that. It's always best to do your rocket in stages. That means once you've used fuel, you can dump some fuel tanks and the rocket engine, make your rocket lighter and get into orbit. Right, now get the TR-18A stack to cover again. Prim under your rocket. Now we need to build the rocket that'll get you through the apps here. I've worked out using the FLT 400 fuel tank. Prim under there. And the, the LVT FLT 800 fuel tank. Prim under there. Now we need an engine. So go to engines, get the LVT 45 engine. Prim under there. And that's our rocket. That, ew, that will get you into orbit. Okay, for all the nerds out there, who want to learn a bit more about engineering? Okay, so I've got the, I've downloaded this mod, installed it in this game. It gives you all this extra information, like cost, mass, ISP, thrust, torque. But the only things you need to worry about is thrust to weight ratio and delta V. Now, in the old game, well, not in the old game, yeah, in the old versions of the game, aerodynamics was not right. And it worked out that you needed 4,500 meters per second, which is your change in velocity that required to get into orbit. Now, doing some testing, I found out that it's now 4,000 meters per second. Roughly, it's a little less than that. But 4,000 will make sure you can get out of the atmosphere and into orbit. That little extra then on top there is so we can return from orbit. Okay, that's the delta V. That's the first stage delta V and the second stage delta V. 
and that's the total. And these are the two stages. Okay. After that, let's look at the thrust to weight ratio. Make sure that's above 1.4. If you got that above 1.4, you're going to be fine getting into orbit. Thrust to weight ratio is the ratio of your thrust to your weight. And you want that to be above 1. That means you can go up. If it was below 1, you will fall. <laughs> you would crash. So a very important two things you need for your engineering of rockets. Okay. Now that we've sorted our rocket, let's go and name him. I'm going to call this Orbiter 2 Orbit. And save. Make sure we've got Jebediah in the cockpit. Yep, because he's the pilot. Very important. Or you could have Valentia Gerber. She's also a pilot. But I always love Jeb. So let's go and launch it. I'll see you on the launch pad. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad, ready to get ourselves into orbit with Jebediah Kerwin in the cockpit. But before we go, we need to go through our checklist. All right, number one, make sure staging is correct. Bomb rocket will fire first. Once it's spent, we'll decouple it from our me rocket, where our rocket, this rocket will get us into orbit. Then when we return, we'll decouple that rocket and safely come down. Okay, that's working fine. What we need to do now is make sure that everything else we need to know. Okay, so first couple of things, press M, it comes to map view. This will show you your trajectory where you're traveling and it'll give you all the information you require, like how high you are and how low your orbit is as well. And when you're launching, you want to go to the right. By the way, this is your navel. You're going to use this to control your rocket up, down, left, or right. If you know it, then skip to the getting into orbit bit. And if I click on the speed indicator here, you see we're in orbit 174.6 meters per second. But we're not moving. Well, in fact, if I fast forward time, we are moving. And that's because the planet is rotating. And the reason why it's important is because we can use that extra speed to get into orbit, to use less fuel, make our orbit more fuel efficient. And that's what NASA does. That's why they've launched from Cape Canaveral, which is on the equator or close enough. And they use that to get boost their cells into orbit. Okay, now that information is known, come out to map view. Let your thrust to fall, press the T key which will engage your SES. You make sure your stability and assist is selected. Whichever way you point your rocket, this control system will try to make sure you're traveling in that direction. Now that's all you need to know. So let's do a countdown in five, four, three, two, one. Launch, press space bar. And we're off. Okay, with the new aerodynamic system, the new aerodynamic in this game, you're gonna to wanna to turn over first thing. And that's because of two things. One, they've increased the physics range of the physics bubble in the game. It's now about 500 or is it 200 kilometers? So if your jet's in the bottom rocket, it may hit the launch pad, damaging it. So what, now we're not over the launch pad, we can jettison anything and it's not going to damage our global space center. Second thing is because of the aerodynamics. You can no longer get to 10 kilometers, which is what you used to do, and then do your gravity turn straight to 45 degrees. You're quite likely to lose control. Slow turnover. You can't do any sharp turns. Try to make sure your reticle near the center of your navel is pointing close to that yellow marker, which is actually the direction that your rocket is traveling. Okay, now we're at 45 degrees. Do a slow turn. And by the way, that red line I've enabled. 
from the debug menu which I can't set, show you because if I press F12 it'll make my recording stop shows you your direction you're traveling and we're actually going quite fast they slow down our speed Oop, stage stage again look you're traveling full thrust now we'll go to map view click on apapsis which has appeared here now this is the direction your rocket is traveling and you want to get that apapsis to 100 kilometers And you see now the speed has changed to orbit. You see they've got that little extra speed from the surface. Speed. And that's going to require to get... We're using that speed to get ourselves into orbit. Again, make sure you're pointing at that yellow reticle. So you don't lose control. The small rocket doesn't seem to be too... ...required. Okay, we're at 100 kilometers. Press X to kill your velocity. And 100 kilometers, why? Because 100 kilometers is a more standard orbit. It's higher than 70 kilometers, which is when the atmosphere ends and the music begins, when you're in space. So if we fast forward time, we're now in space. Okay, that was the hardest part of the orbit. Now comes the easiest part. How to complete your orbit. Right, you see if you hover over this, uh, this our trajectory, we have this little ball. If you click on it, it allows you to create a maneuver node or warp to here. So if you add a maneuver node, it gives you this. Now if you drag the yellow marker here across, you see that increases. That is what would happen if you thrust your rocket in that direction. Oh, and what you want to do is do that until these two, the apapsis and the periapsis, almost swap position. You do it halfway across, then you get near 100 kilometer orbit. And that's what you want. That's what we're going to do. And if you look at an apple, we've now got an extra reticle on it. And that's your maneuver node. So if you point your rocket towards that. And if you thrust in that direction, you'll complete your maneuver node. But your maneuver node is in 34 seconds. And the burn is going to take 44 seconds. Now you want to burn half of that before and half of that after the maneuver node. And that's going to happen in 22 seconds before. So thrust. And 22 seconds after. And you want to watch this now. As soon as that comes down, let's go to map view. To, map view to show you what's happening. You can see our orbit is increasing slightly. It'll come to a point where it'll exactly match that orbit we've created. Now keep an eye on this, this is the speed change you require to get yourselves into that maneuver note. Once that comes down to there, slow down. And you do find control. Get as close as possible. As soon as it starts going up, stop thrusting. Click the tick button. And we have completed! We are now in orbit! We're not going to crash into the ground this time, Jep. Thank you very much. And what can you do while you're in orbit? Well, you can do science. But we're not in cream mode, so it's useless. You can do an EVA. No, not IVA. EVA. Space bar to let go. Press R to engage your jet back. And you can maneuver around. Drift away from a rocket, never to return. Take pictures of yourself. And anything else. Okay. Now that's enough of that, let's get him back. Even I struggle using the jetpack. Okay, F to grab, oh, missed him.
B to board, F to grab, B to board. B to board, I'd say. Okay, now we're back in the capsule. Now you've done your orbit. You, now you're in your orbit, sorry. You can add a maneuver node and work out how things work. What would I do if I thrust that way? What would happen if I thrust that way? More about that way. Or that way. Now this is handy for actually to show you something. How do you return? Let's show you. If I add a maneuver node here, you would, some people would say, thrust towards the planet. If I do that, it's going to take 483 meters per second to do that. Now that's very inefficient. What you want to do, create another maneuver node, is thrust retrograde, opposite direction to where you're traveling. If I do that there, 300 meters per second. That's a lot less than 400 odd meters per second. And that's what you want to do now. Now we've created the maneuver node, we might as well use it. Another little handy feature they've added to the game. I click on here. Oh, not warp here. Warp to next maneuver. And that'll fast forward us one minute before maneuver. Be careful if your maneuver node. If your maneuver burn takes over one minute then you're going to be in trouble because it'll manu this time acceleration will automatically time accelerate you to one minute before the minute will note at least that's what i think it does see yep one minute before maneuver note okay now we've got this little handy little arrow showing you where that maneuver node is let's point towards it that burn is 12 seconds so half of that is six seconds. So let's fast forward time to that. Ooh. Ooh, and we're overburned up. No, no matter. It doesn't matter too much. Because we're only returning. I said. Follow that maneuver as close as possible. And there we are. We're close enough to that maneuver node. We're going to return. Hopefully safely. Now for re-entry. And the reason why we added the heat shield. Go ahead and press spacebar. Revealing your heat shield. Which will protect you from the friction of the atmosphere. And make sure our electricity charge is staying the good level now what you want to do is keep your I was gonna, was gonna say rocket it's no longer a rocket it's just a capsule you want to keep that pointing at your retrograde that way when you're coming in the air will hit the bottom of your capsule and the heat shield will protect you if I can right click on that shows the ablator and let's come out of the atmosphere. As soon as you hit the atmosphere, you'll come from non-physics acceleration to physics mode, where you can only use physics acceleration. You can speed up time if you want, but just make sure you keep on pointing at that retrograde marker. Keep an eye on electricity because that's going to go down. That's what time of it. And you see now we're getting re entry heating. And it's now hitting the blitter on the heat shield. Now this is showing the forces that's been applied. Coming in hot. Now we're starting to get deep later. It's protecting us. Ah. 
and basically where an ablator heat shield is, is sort of like coating which gets worn away. As that wears down, protect you, so it's taking up all the heat, taking up all the energy. So that energy is not transferred to your command pod, burning Jebediah alive. Okay. That's the worst over. We're under 300 meters per second. We can pop our parachute. And that'll slow us down even more. Switch the SAS off because the parachute will now keep us oriented correctly. And we can fast forward time because it's going to take a little bit of time. Anyway, guys, that is how you get into orbit, how you return safely. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you want a certain type of tutorial, let me know in the comments below. If you want to, you can subscribe because I'll be doing some more tutorial videos. I'll leave, I'm even thinking of doing a let's play. I also do a show called Kerbal in Yachty, which comes out, I'm not entirely sure at the moment. It, when I can do it, I do it. Basically a story of Kerbals. And now that we've returned, I'll ask you again, subscribe, like, comment, and I will see you next time. Trust me, I'm an engineer.